They call it the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, this is quickly becoming my favorite on-the-go laptop for creative professionals. It's thin, light, packs a punch with an RTX 3060, as well as a Ryzen 7 5800H, and you can also get it in a 3050 Ti. So there's a few options that this laptop comes with. Now, the biggest frustration I have with this laptop is you can only upgrade one of the RAM sticks inside of the laptop. So if I'm gonna ding it for anything, that's gonna be a big problem for people who wanna have a larger upgrade path. The max RAM configuration of this laptop is 40 gigs, so keep that in mind. If you want my thoughts on the build quality, usability, and just simply first impressions of the laptop, I filmed a full unboxing, and I'm gonna link that up at the end of this video. But for now, we're gonna cover things that I did not cover in that video, as well as my thoughts on this laptop as I've had it in my studio for the past two to three weeks. First and foremost, let's get into the color accuracy. This laptop has a solid color accurate screen. It is not, you know, off the charts for Adobe RGB or DCI P3, but the color accuracy is good. And regarding the webcam, here's a quick sample, but I want to note that I do like how you can manually turn on and off the webcam with a sliding shutter on the top of your screen bezel. Here is a sample of the webcam and the audio on the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase with that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, but that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. The speakers are good. They're not necessarily great. And actually this event here along the top is a vent. It is not a speaker. That was something I was, you know, questioning during the unboxing, but that is a vent and not a speaker. The audio comes out from underneath the laptop here at these two speaker spots. Now, I tend to have very oily hands, and as you can see as I'm moving the laptop, this laptop is prone to fingerprints, so just keep that in mind. Now, one area I think people want to be aware of is the port selection. As you can see, we have two USB Type A's and your power port along the back of the chassis. On the right side of the chassis, we have two USB Type C's, and then on the left side, we have a headphone jack and an SD card slot. As you can see, there is no mini display port, there is no HDMI port, so if you're gonna wanna connect a monitor to this laptop, you either need a dongle to USB type C, or you need to just go straight from your monitor to USB type C with that cord. Now they do make those cords. The monitor I have here in my studio came with one of those cords. So this isn't a big deal, but it definitely is something to be aware of when you're ordering the laptop and you get it into your, into your studio or into your house. And you're like, uh, how do I plug my HDMI cord in? Well, you need a dongle or you need a dedicated USB type C cord. One of my favorite little design nods is the Lenovo Legion logo, how it's iridescent. And actually there's a lot of iridescence on this laptop. You can see on the back of the chassis here on the ledge, there's some iridescence. There's iridescence on that logo. And then even on the inside of the computer, you have it here at the other Lenovo logo. So I just love the subtle little nods to design and thoughtfulness. Even along the back side here, they've uh, put their logo right there on the foot. Not only is this laptop thin and light, but it also has great ventilation along the back of the chassis, both side panels and the bottom cover. Now this does really well cooling the laptop in Photoshop, but when we do video editing, I notice that it gets pretty high on the thermals, but it doesn't stay there. So it raises up with the thermals, but then it quickly cools back down. These Ryzen processors are a little bit hotter than I was hoping for, but it's nothing to be concerned about because it doesn't stay at that temperature. It's not like it heats up and then can't get itself cool. It heats up during a 4K export, let's say, and then cools back down. Now, the last thing I wanna mention as far as the build and just usability of the laptop is concerned is how well this laptop is put together. This was a really big standout feature for me because a lot of times with bigger gaming laptops, they don't really assemble in the neatest fashion. There's catchy edges, there's chunky edges, there's sharp edges. This laptop is put together so well. There's no catchy edges. Everything is very well rounded on the chassis and so it just feels really nice in your hands when you're carrying it around there's this nice little grab bar that they put in here so you can just grab the laptop get a nice grip on it and you're on the go it's the little things that really make a difference between a great laptop and a good laptop and to me this is quickly becoming like i said in the beginning one of my favorite laptops for on the go creators now, without further ado, let's jump into the performance section. I know you guys are excited about that. That's why you're here to see if this laptop is good enough for your creator needs. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna look at the simulated benchmarks in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core.
Now, let's jump out of the simulated benchmarks and get into the real world test. Let's take a look at 3D modeling. And this laptop crushes it in all 3D modeling tests. The one that it lags back in was 3DS Max. So if you're a heavy 3DS Max user and you're wanting to get as much performance as possible, I would recommend going with something like the Legion 5 Pro with an RTX 3070. With this one being an RTX 3060 Max-Q, it has a little bit less performance well, quite a lot of it less performance than compared to the Legion 5 Pro. So just keep that in mind. And I may do a full head-to-head -head review depending on how much feedback I get back from you guys. So if you want a full head-to-head -head review, comment below and let me know between the Legion 7 Slim with the RTX 3060 Max-Q and the Legion 5 Pro with the RTX 3070. That's the option I have for a head-to-head -head review for you. Shifting into After Effects, you'll have no problem with the After Effects standard benchmark. It gets great performance. However, when you get into the After Effects render benchmark, it's good, but it's not necessarily blowing us away. It's a good medium, middle of the charts benchmark. Like I said, because of the RTX 3060 Max-Q, it doesn't perform as well as something like a full RTX 3060 or a 3070 or a 3080 for that matter. So if you're wanting to get really, really, really good render performance or really, really good 3D modeling performance, like you have to have it, that's what this laptop is for, I'd recommend going to a standard 3060 or a 3070 for that extra boost in performance. Regarding video editing, punch for punch, this laptop does great and here are the export times coming up on the screen now. Regarding Premiere Pro, 4K playback was smooth, 6K B raw was good. You will probably not even notice your frames being dropped, but then as we get up into the 6K red footage, that stuff is so heavy and it did struggle there. For DaVinci Resolve, playback was great, and here are the export times for 1080p and 4K out of DaVinci Resolve. Now, regarding the thermals, fan noise, and export results, this is one of my favorite tests I've been running lately. And as you can see, the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim has no problems at different fan modes and getting still great export times. So if you don't wanna have your CPU so hot, if you don't wanna have your fan noise so loud, you can export at you know quiet or balanced mode and still get great export results. You know, it's gonna be a few minutes slower at those settings, but it's not gonna be as loud and it's not gonna be as hot. So I'd recommend exporting at those lower settings, just have a more enjoyable user experience. Regarding Photoshop, this laptop is gonna have zero issues. To me, anything at a six or 700 and above is plenty for Photoshop. Even if you have a very complicated project with tons of layers and effects and brushes, at an 827, you're in good hands. But if you need more performance, if you're saying, okay, I, I have a really heavy Photoshop workload, just go ahead and swap out that single RAM stick inside of your laptop for a 16 or a 32 gig, and you can get yourself up to 24 or 40 gigs of RAM, and you'll have no problems. Regarding Photoshop with the different fan modes, thermals, and scores, here are those results. And as you can see, you can get a lower fan noise and lower thermals for a slightly lower performance. But when you're on the go, this will help with battery life. So if you run your laptop on conserved power mode and you have the brightness down and you have it on balanced or quiet mode, you're gonna get much better battery life. Now, speaking of battery life, here are those results coming up on the screen now. You get solid battery life for productivity tasks, streaming video, and then pretty good battery life for Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Now, for Photoshop and Premiere Pro, what I did is I ran the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery went dead. And then for Premiere Pro, I ran a 4K project on repeat looping until the battery went dead. So that's how I got those results. If you're somebody looking for a thin and light laptop, but you don't want to compromise on performance, this is a fantastic option. It runs cool and quiet on the lower fan mode settings. It has fantastic styling, an easy on the go package if you do have that need and great performance. Now I would note if you got the greasy fingers like I do, you're gonna have some fingerprints on the chassis. Otherwise it's a fantastic laptop that I would highly recommend. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.